Okay, so, by the way, I use coffee cans to store stuff in, to keep them fresher or longer. So if you have problems with, like, brown sugar that hardens, use an old coffee container, put the lid on it. Don't have that problem no more. Anyway, so I've been craving oatmeal, raisin, walnut cookies all day. And I make this a little different than most people, so I'll show you how to make it real quick. I tried to find my camera mount so I could use both hands and kind of show you, but I couldn't find it, so no idea where it's at. I do have memory issues due to the chemo and radiation, so just going to have to bear with me. Anyways, we start this out, stick a bowl. Um, I usually weigh stuff and not rely on measuring cups. It's a lot more accurate. Foods always come out better. We're going to start out with 200 grams of light brown sugar and then 50 grams of of just white granulated sugar so let me get those measured out and uh, sorry you can't watch me dump that in there when I am measuring in grams if it's a little bit off by just like five grams or less I don't worry about that so we got 204 in there now I'm gonna add white granulated sugar until we get to 254 255 ish so there we go if you want to measure that out, by the way, that is one cup of brown sugar, one quarter cup of white sugar. You're going to add that to a mixer with a cup of butter that's been softened or at room temperature. One cup of butter is also equal to two sticks. You're going to turn the mixer on about a medium speed and let it mix for about two minutes or until it's kind of like a creamy texture. After this mixes up, then we're going to add two eggs. This is what it looks like, so I'm going to add the two eggs, and I'm also going to scrape the sides down. Once you get the sides scraped down, then you're going to mix it on high for about one minute. Alright, this is what it looks like after that's done. Next, you're going to scrape the sides down again. You're going to add one tablespoon of vanilla and one tablespoon of molasses. Again, you're going to add one tablespoon of vanilla, one tablespoon of molasses. Here's the uh, vanilla. And again, I got to put the phone down because I don't have a camera stand. And here's the molasses. It's thick. It'll take a long while to scrape out, but you can use a uh, utensil or something to scrape it out. So let me get that done. Again, you're basically going to put this, turn the mixer on high for about one minute to let this mix up. And there's what that looks like. So once you get that done, next you need to measure out 188 grams or one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. And there's that one. Add that to a second bowl. In the second bowl, you're going to add one teaspoon of baking soda one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon, one half teaspoon of salt. There's our one teaspoon baking soda. One, our first one teaspoon of cinnamon. And then I'll eyeball for the second one. You never have enough cinnamon. Now 
Now I do this in my other videos, but I know this salt shaker, when I do one thing, that's about a half a teaspoon. So two, and I'll go ahead and do a little bit more. Just goes to prove, don't always have to measure everything perfect. Next, you're going to take your flour, baking soda, salt, and cinnamon, add it to the mixer, and mix it up. While this is mixing, you're going to measure out three cups of old-fashioned oats, a... Um, I usually do between a half a cup and one cup of raisins and then between a half a cup and one cup of walnuts. But get this mixed up well first. I usually do it on about a medium speed. Start out slow. Otherwise you're going to have flour going everywhere like I just did. Then increase the speed. So let that mix up while measuring out the other stuff. Three cups of old-fashioned oats, by the way, is about 240 grams. So, once this is mixed up, you add your oats, your raisins, and your walnuts to this. Get them mixed up good, too. I'm going with about 140 grams of raisins. Then for the walnuts, I went with about 120 grams of walnuts. If you're using large pieces, you might want to break them up. Basically, I rely on the mixer to do that. Get all that mixed up good. I usually take and scrape the sides down once or twice while that's mixing. Next thing we're going to do is transfer the dough from the mixer to another bowl. We're going to cover it and stick it in the refrigerator for one hour. Cover the dough up with plastic, stick it in the refrigerator for one hour. You could theoretically skip this step. I'll tell you what this does. When you put the dough in the refrigerator for an hour, it causes the dough to get hard. And then that way it doesn't run out and you end up with thin cookies. So if you stick in a refrigerator for an hour first, your cookies will be thicker. If you don't mind thin cookies, you can go ahead and bake it now. You can always tell how well the cookie dough tastes by how clean your bowl is when you scrape. <coughs> uh, lick the bowl. <laughs> anyway, so... Um, when these come out of the refrigerator, you're basically going to bake them at 350 degrees. Make sure you preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Then you're going to bake them 12 to 14 minutes. Alright, so preheat your oven to 350 degrees. This is the dough. I've taken some, actually I've got a, I'm using a combination of cake pans. My cookie sheets are actually in the dishwasher. And then I'll use, I've got one of those pizza... Uh, stone pans I put anyway so I put parchment paper down on these pans and basically you're going to take a spoon and scoop out about a two inch ball and uh, I'll bring you back right before I put these in the oven this is how I do it cookies are made to be ate not look pretty put them in the oven 12 to 14 minutes I'll bring you back when they're done.